Hello guys, welcome to Open Source Lecture. Today we are going to look at the chromosomal classification. We all know what chromosomes are. Chromosomes are the genetic material in our cells. They are so important. Now basically today we are going to look at how we classify these chromosomes. What are some of the criteria that we use to classify these chromosomes? You might wonder why we need to classify chromosomes. What is so special about chromosomes? Our chromosomes we know they are what contains our DNAs and our genes. So we need to understand these things because so many abnormalities happen in our system. So to understand chromosomes, you will understand some of the abnormalities that we normally see in humans and even in other organisms. So because of things like this, to reveal them, we have to understand what chromosomes are and what criteria we use to classify these chromosomes. So today we are going to look at how we classify these chromosomes. What are the criteria that we use to classify these chromosomes? So today uh, you will see that we use three main criteria to classify chromosomes. The first one is the centromeric precision. We use the centromere. I will tell you in a short while what centromeres are. And the second one is we use the banding patterns. The third one is we use the size of the chromosomes because chromosomes are of different sizes. So to tell you what we're going to do today, basically, we are going to start with the centromeric positions. Then in our subsequent videos, we are going to look at the banding pattern and the size. So here we go. Now to know what centromeric positions of chromosomal classification is, we first need to know what are centromeres. Now centromere, I will give you what centromeres are. So let's say that this is our chromosome. So in every chromosome, we have um, what we call the short arm and the long arm. For example, if we take this into consideration, let me make a one sketch. Okay. So this is our chromosome. So every chromosome, we have two main parts. We call the other one the P arm and the other one as the Q arm. So normally, the longest arm, we call it the Q arm. So if you look at this arm and this arm, this is the longest one. So we are going to call this one as the Q arm. And this being the shortest one, we call it the, the P arm. Okay? So to get this thing, I mean, better or to keep it in your mind, just reflect your mind to letter P and letter Q. If you start counting in alphabetical order, you reach P before Q. So Q, you reach P before Q. So P will be the short and Q will be the longest one for easy understanding. So apart from these two arms, every chromosome has a point, a center, where the two arms will join. And this is what we call the centromere. In some books, you will see the kinetochore. They're all the same. And in fact, some books will call it the primary constriction. The primary constriction is the point where the two chromosomes will bend. They will join. So that is the centromere. So to understand this centromere, it also means that you are going to understand how we classify chromosomes. So to keep this in our mind, centromere, the point of attachment of the chromosomes, is the point where the kinetochores, actually the actual point of attachment to the spindle fiber occur, centromere. So with this basic information that chromosomes have short arms and long arms, and they have a center called the centromere. So we are going to use this centromeric position to talk about our today's lecture. So let's put this at the back of our mind. The attachment of the chromosomes is what we call the centromere. So having been said that now, let's actually look at the centromeric position, the criteria that we use to classify chromosomes. So based on the position of this centromere, we classify chromosomes into four main tribes. We start with the first one. The first one that is um, the metacentromeric chromosomes. OK, 
Okay. The metacentric chromosomes, as the name implies, meta in science always means big, big one, very big one. So metacentric chromosome. If we said metacentric chromosome, we are going to talk about the chromosomes that have its centromere region at the center of the two arms. This also means that in metacentric chromosome, the two arms are almost or exactly of the same length. Let's look at how that will rep be represented here. Better understand it, let me just make it a straight line for you better understand it. Okay, I'm sorry that my drawing is very poor. Okay, now let's say this is our chromosome now. So we are talking about our P arm and our Q arm. So now if we say metacentric chromosome, we say these chromosomes they have equal lengths, which also means that our central metric position is located exactly at the center, at the middle of the chromosome. So here we just Assume that this is the midpoint of this chromosome. And this arm and this arm are going to be exactly equal. In other words, the same length. So if a chromosome appears like this, we call it metacentric chromosome. I hope it's clear. Okay. Now, the second one is the sub-metacentric chromosome. The name itself defines what it means. The first one, we say metacentric, they are equal lengths. Sub-metacentric, which means they are almost equal, but there is a big differences between the two lengths, between the Q and then the uh, uh, P arms. So in sub-metacentric chromosomes, the two arms are not exactly equal. In other words, one of the arms is a little bit longer than the other one. So we call it sub metacentric chromosome. So let's look at how we're going to represent that. Assuming this is our chromosome now. The two are not very different, but the, there is a little bit differences in their lengths. So let's assume that we are going to put our centromeric position here so that one of the arms will be longer than the other one. We're going to be biased a little bit here. So this will be our longest arm, we call it Q, and this will be our shortest arm, we call it P, so that the differences will not be too much. So if it happened like that, we call it submetacentric chromosome. On the first one, we are going to talk about the telocentric chromosome. Telocentric chromosomes. Now, in telocentric chromosome, there is no short arm. In other words, the short arm is no more there. We have only one arm, and that will be the longest arm. So the centromere will be located here. Let's say this is our chromosomes. And now the centromere, that is the attachment point, is going to be located at the top of the long chromosome here. The, the, the short arm is no more present. We have only one arm. And on top of that single chromosome, our centromere locates itself on top of that chromosome. So that is the telocentric chromosome. And this telocentric chromosome, we never see this in human. It is an exceptional phenomenon that we never see in human beings. Though the research has shown that um, this thing has been discovered in some mammals and some plant species and even some protozoan species. It has been documented that this type of chromosome has been found in some of those organisms, but it is never found in the human beings. Now let's look at the fourth classification. Acrocentric chromosomes. Now, acrocentric chromosomes and then the submetacentric chromosomes are a little bit confusing, but they are different. Submetacentric, one of the arms is longer, but it's not um, 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 that much longer than the short arm. 